Hi, this is Matt from Extended Reach. Today I wanted to show you our new custom form builder that we're officially launching today. You're probably aware that you can add custom fields to activities and reports to gather specific information. For example, this phone call activity is asking who the call was with and what the subject of the call was. These custom fields are used on many ac activities and reports throughout Extended Reach. However, they have some pretty serious shortcomings. First, they're limited to only 10 fields. Secondly, that you can't record narrative paragraphs of information. And finally, the layout is really fixed and can't be adjusted much. Our new form builder eliminates these problems. You can now add hundreds of fields, including paragraphs, and adjust the layout of the form. You can have one or more fields in a single row. You can create different sections, and you can even adjust the height and width of everything. So let me show you how this works. Agency administrators can now use this feature to create forms. I'm going to create a home report as an example, but you can use this new form builder on cases and home activities and reports. So I'll create a new home report, and I'm just going to call this a fire drill. To use the new form builder, I need to click the Show Advanced Options. Then I need to click the option labeled Use Advanced Form Builder. To configure the form, I click on the Custom tab as you normally would. But now it looks different. The form builder uses a drag and drop interface. The available fields are on the left hand side. To add one, you either drag the field to the layout area or you just click the field. So let's build our fire drill form. Let's ask for the time that the fire drill was conducted. So I'm going to drag the time field over. Now I'm going to ask whether the fire drill was conducted in the daylight. So I'm going to use a drop down that for that for yes or no. I also want to know what the overall evacuation time was, so I'm going to use a number to capture that in minutes. Now I want to record the scenario that was conducted during this fire drill, so I'm going to have a paragraph. And then finally I want to describe the client's response to the fire drill, so I'm going to add another paragraph for that. So now I've gone ahead and added all of the fields, but let me customize this and make it really super apparent to the user what we're asking for. So I'm going to add labels. So if I click on the time field, it's going to take me to the settings tab here. So now I can adjust the label. So I want to clarify and say I want the fire drill time. For the drop down, I want to know if it was daylight. So I'm going to just say daylight question mark and I'm going to leave the options as yes or no, but obviously I could add more. For the number, I want to know the evacuation time in minutes. So I'll say evacuation time in minutes. For this paragraph, I want to know the scenario. So I'm going to say fire scenario. And the paragraph, I want them to describe the client's response. So I'm going to say client's response. So now I've got all my fields labeled correctly. Now I want to adjust the layout. It's not really uh, flowing too well here. So I'm going to move the daylight up to the second one just by dragging and dropping it. And I'm going to move the evacuation time up to the first row just by dragging and dropping it. Then finally, the fire scenario. I want them to really describe what this is. So I'm going to make this a medium height just to give a visual cue to the user of how much information I'm expecting. And finally, for the client response, I want them to feel like they can fully describe what happened. So I'm going to make this large, uh, just to, again, to give them uh, the impression that they should enter a lot of information here. Now, the final thing that I want to do is I want to make sure people are filling out this form. So for the time, I'm going to go ahead and click the required. So the, now that's required. I also want to know for sure what the evacuation time. So I'm going to click that as required. So now I've gone ahead and built my form the way I want it. The form builder can be used to build much more elaborate forms than this example. We also include some things I should point out, like section breaks. So if you want to break your form into different sections, you can go ahead and do that and label your sections. You can add things such as signatures. So if you want to capture like a foster parent signature or the signature of the client or someone else, you can do that. They can sign it on any touch screen or even with their mouse. 
So I think I'm ready to make this go live. So I'm going to flip back to the general tab here and throw this on my compliance checklist just so it's easy for me to get it. So I'm going to move this to documents. Now I'm going to save this. So now I'm in an example home, so Snow White, it's a foster home, and here's my fire drill that I just created on my compliance tab. So if I click add report, you see here's the report I just built. So I can enter the time, it's got a nice time picker, and pick seven. It was in, not in the daylight, and the evacuation time was five minutes, and then I can fill in the rest of the details. So that's a real quick example of how to use the form builder to build a custom form in extended reach. There's one more thing I want to show you though. A fire drill in particular is probably something that you're going to want the foster parents to do. So we have a trick for that. So let me jump back to the fire drill configuration and throw this in the edit mode and show you what I'm talking about. So again, if I click show advanced options and I scroll down, there's this option that says foster home initiated report using custom form. So if I check that and then I save it, now if I go to the foster family website and go to the home page, I'll refresh my page, here's the fire drill. So now I just created a form that not only my caseworkers could fill out, but my foster homes can fill out through the family website, submit it all electronically, complete your compliance tab requirements, and uh, do it all uh, online without any paperwork. The final thing I wanted to mention is, is all of these fields that we've created here, they have field codes associated with them. So you can take all this information that are entered either by your staff or by the foster homes and push it into documentation. So if I jump back one more time to the fire drill configuration form and go to that custom tab. I'll throw it in edit mode here. Now if I click on one of these fields, you'll see in the corner here it says field one, field two, field three. So every field in the custom form is automatically assigned a field number. You'll be able to use that number with a generic field code to create uh, documentation. So one thing you could do with it is you could build forms like I just did here, but then let's say your state or your county wants you to print off an official form of this information. So you could actually also associate a Microsoft Word field coded document with this form, and then after it's filled out, you can generate that document automatically pushing this information into the Word document so you have a perfectly formatted document that you can give to your county or state office. We'll be posting instructions on how to create those field codes and populate those documents in our help section shortly. But I hope this was a good introduction to what the foster home, uh, what the custom form builder was able to do and how you can use it in uh, Extended Reach. Thanks for watching.